So for our next episode, we will have a Filipino teacher from China. So what's unique is this. Si Teacher Noel bumalik pa. After ng lockdown for several months, bumalik pa sa classroom. Sila ang unang naka-experience kung paano magturo ng kaharap na ang mga students face-to-face. It's really the new normal. Let's listen to this next episode. It's a special one. Mr. Noel, can you say something about yourself and what do you teach? I am Mr. Noel Pabalan. Students call me here Mr. Noel. I have been teaching for about 23 years now. I've taught in Fiji Islands. I've also taught in Philippines. And now I'm here in China. This is my third year in China. I am teaching mathematics here in uh, Daqing, Cambridge International School. And I handle uh, grade 9 and grade 10. I teach them uh, pure mathematics one and probability and statistics one. So, Noel, before the epidemic, uh, how's a typical class? Uh, were your students ready or trained to handle remote learning? Well, uh, I think as you all know, um, epidemic uh, started here. So, we were kind of early in uh, implementing uh, digital learning. What's good with uh, that is uh, from my previous school in uh, Philippines, we started digital learning already. So our students were capable of uh, using Google Classroom and Google Chromes. That's, uh, I think, we're one of the pioneers uh, back back home in Philippines. And I'm quite par- proud of that. The good thing is that mga students and kayo, teachers, to handle technology. Then the lockdown happened. What's next? The epidemic started, I think, January. So it was Chinese New Year. So we are on break. So uh, February came and uh, we had to sort of change our face-to-face learning into digital learning, which is video, basically video chatting, or you're in uh, Zoom or in Microsoft Teams. Uh, You all know that we are here in China, so we don't have Google. So it was quite daunting for us to look for ways of uh, doing online learning. So at first we use Zoom, then we transition to other apps, which are also video conferencing. So Noel, tapos biglang nag-online learning na lahat, ano? What are the best practices you had so far? Can you share it? One important best practice probably is collaboration. Your team of teachers need to collaborate on this. And you have to be tight. So one way of having that is through communication. So again, we don't have Google Groups, so we have WeChat Groups. So we use WeChat Groups for teachers so we could collaborate there. And also we use WeChat groups for our students, for our different subjects. So if I have exercises or homeworks, uh, we or ask them to send it out there in uh, our WeChat group. So I could mark them and I could discuss to them uh, apart from uh, our online learning. So we do uh, have the same schedules as what we were doing in face-to-face. It's just that, uh, let's say, your time is or your class would be from 9 to 10. You have to go to Zoom and you teach them online. And you all know students, it, their mind would be just 20 minutes, right? I think it's given already when, when we were teaching face-to-face. It's 20 minutes. So you, that 20 minutes should mean a lot. So when you teach, just teach. Uh, teach your subject, teach your, your, your theory. Let them know that uh, or let them check that they're listening. And then uh, teach. And then after that, you do exercises and then uh, entertain some questions. So what I do is I, of course, we, I mute them. And if they have questions, we go through the Zoom chat. So if they have questions, they they chat me. That's how, how I do it. And then if they have other questions, then we do private questioning in our WeChat group so that if students, other, other students have questions, we also do it there. And we also have a um, learning management system. It's called School IS. All their homeworks, uh, all our grades are inputted there. So before the uh, epidemic came, so since August, we have been using that. So we have uh, encoding our grades. They've been sending their homeworks there. We're checking uh, their homeworks from there. So now my next question, Noel, is about assessment. How did you assess the students? And how did you give them tests and exams? It's quite hard, right, when you're having assessment. So what we, what the school did is to have weekly, uh, a monthly exam. So we would have time, and it's a timetable. So we give them the the dates of uh, and the time of that exam, and it's still a uh, pen and paper. So what they do on this particular day, on this particular time, you download it from our school management, which is the school IS, 
and then download the uh, uh, the question and then they solve it either on paper or on the screen what we just ask them when we're uh, having exam is their camera must be uh, their whole body must be seen on the camera so and then they write on the paper and then you must think how do we how do they submit so they use their cell phones they take a photo of each of the paper and then make it into, P into a PDF format and then send it. So the teacher would ask uh, to send it in uh, the school management system or to their WeChat, uh, personal WeChat, not the WeChat group, the personal WeChat of the teacher. And then from there we mark uh, using mouse. <laughs> we don't have stylus, so we, all all shops then were, were closed. So wow, talagang new normal na to, Noel, di ba? And how, so ito ang tanong ko, how did you motivate your students to, to do their best. You have to motivate the students and one motivation is their Cambridge exam uh, which is usually May. So you have to tell them uh, there's no way we could do face-to-face -face but to learn through online. So you have to trust the process and think of you want to be an A-star level of student then learn and uh, let's learn from here online. You know basically Chinese students are uh, their workaholic so uh, motivating them is not a problem so but then again uh, on the context of telling them okay you need to study you don't you don't stop hard work would uh, prevail you'll see from their assessments it's just going up and up so i'm quite happy with their results so yeah those are best practices so collaborate with your teachers collaborate with your students and use technology so, Noel, after the lockdown, you had three weeks at bumalik pa kayo into to, to have face-to-face -face teaching. Now, the U.S. planned to do this, but it never happened. So, how was it? Kamo sa yung balik skwela ninyo? If, I think we're all quite excited in uh, seeing our students again. Probably them seeing their classmates again. The few few days were really, they're kind of excited to go. What we did, or actually what the school did, or what the government of Heilongjiang did is to test all the students and test all the teachers and staff for COVID-19 and we all turned out negative so and right now I think we're on a second month of zero zero uh, virus so we don't have we don't have new cases nothing it's zero so it's kind of normal here in our area in the north Ang number one concern lagi is school safety. So how did your school manage this? We, on the first day, we, or probably before the first day, uh, from WeChat groups, uh, all the class teachers or class advisors have already told the parents and the students on what to do going to school. So the first thing is QR codes, okay? All establishments here in China have QR codes. These are QR health codes, so... They would have to go to the entrance and uh, use their phone and scan the QR code. Uh, if it turns green, that means you're okay. And then you could go inside the, 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 the school compound. And then uh, they have to follow a line. So they just don't walk around. There's a line and you have to keep on uh, the, that 1.5 distance uh, uh, from, uh, from the other person. And then... Before going inside the lobby, the school lobby, then we um, sort of, um, there are two teachers there t checking the temperature. And one thing is important is mask. So everybody has mask. So if you don't have mask, the school will provide you mask. And the school provides weekly masks. They give you 10 uh, masks uh, every week. So that's uh, the, the new norm in uh, school. So 1.5 distance. Um, in the classroom also, it's not anymore like really tight, but there are spaces, uh, but not, not actually 1.5, so it's impossible. So uh, anyway, um, there's no virus anymore in our area, so we're kind of safe. But then again, for us teachers, we had to, uh, it's a must for us to teach in masks, and that's quite hard. <laughs> That's interesting, Noel. Everyone wearing mask. Yun nga ang tanong ko eh. Paano ako magtuturo ng nakamask? Imagine you're in mask and you're teaching like your voice is like blocking the, the mask. So it's quite hard. So you uh, you would have to shout a bit. But then again, things has to move on and that's the new norm. So even the students, even though they're sitting, they're also in a mask. That's a, yeah, that's a new norm. So... It's, it's good uh, going back to school and teaching again, uh, seeing the students. It's not just like seeing their monitors. So seeing them looking at their work. Okay, so same thing. We have 40 minutes or 45 minutes of teaching. And we teach about, I, I teach about 20 minutes 
theory and discussions and then I give them exercises again. The only down part is that uh, we're on mass, that 1.5 distancing, especially when during break. So we have to go out. We cannot be in pack. But it's fun. It's fun seeing them. And uh, it's also, you know, they're also saying that, Teacher Noel or Mr. Noel, I, nice to see you again. <laughs> Alam ko yung teachers in Jan are from all over the world. So, Pano, did, were they able to come back after the lockdowns? The drawback is not all of the teachers came back. We have teachers in Australia, we have teachers in New Zealand, we have teachers in uh, India, we have teachers in uh, Indonesia, Pakistan. So they, they also got trapped. They were not able to come back. Kulang ang teachers. So how did the school manage? How, paano yung mga klase na walang teachers? If it's their class time on that class weekly class schedule, like for us teachers who are here in China, we have to go to the online classroom and we bring our students there and then they still learn through Zoom or Zumo, that app, the Chinese app, which is equivalent to Zoom. And they teach there so online. So we would have to supervise them, have their learnings there in uh, still in online at Zoom. But the students will be in, inside the classroom. And we would be just supervising inside the classroom while the teacher is in the monitor. I'm not sure if it's that's a weakness or... But then again, it's kind of, it's right, like weird. It's like online teaching again. Yeah. So Noel, this is talaga the new normal and I'm sure you had mistakes along the way. How did you improve this? Can you give us some points? I don't think it's the greatest mistake. When you're online, you have to be a bit slow in your pacing of teaching. Okay, so when you are in the classroom, Whatever you show in your presentation, it's right on. But with online, there is a bit of delay with the internet connection. Even though we're like 4G here, so like our internet is fast. It's 100 Mbps. So, but then again, it drags down. Teach a bit slow. Ask them uh, to do lots of exercises. Just the theory part, don't slow it down. Make it as clear as possible. And then always ask. You know, the art of questioning. So always ask. Thank you talaga, Mr. Noel. Everything you shared is very valuable. And now, teachers will be going back to school. What is your final message? Lalo na yung mga Pilipino teachers. Sa Pilipinas o sa U.S.? Mga kababayan, uh, alam ko, very creative kayo. I guess, probably, before you start, you try try it first. Okay? Subukan mo kung okay yon, kung effective yon. So, I'm sure, meron kang kasama sa bahay. Doon ka muna magturo. Uh, check mo muna kung okay. Do a remote testing then kung okay siya. Alam ko, pag Pinoy yung teacher, magaling. Nakakapag-adapt yan. Saludo sa mga Pinoy. I wish you well on your journey to this new norm of online teaching. Uh, Collaborate with your teachers. Best practices. Share best practices. Ano yung nag-work sa kanya? Ano yung hindi nag-work sa'yo? And then try to benchmark. And good luck. Kaya natin. This is Teacher Noel or Mr. Noel. So walang katapusan na itong ating mga sharings. Eventually, we will have more episodes to come. If you want to volunteer and share your best experiences, feel free to text me, message me, and I will welcome all your sharing. Rampage Man. Thank you very much. Mabuhay ka Pinoy.